Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Well, let's take a look at an example of uh, your car accelerating uh, in terms of these motion diagrams and see if we can figure out how to plot this out. So let's say that your car is accelerating from a stop and then coming to rest. Okay, so the light turns green, you accelerate, you drive for a little while, and then the next stoplight, you come back to a rest. So what does the motion diagram look like for this car? Well, motion diagrams are, of course, a series of dots. And let's imagine that each dot, or each frame, corresponds to one second. Okay, here we are at position one. As we accelerate, our car position is going to increase, like so. And then as we come to a stop, the position starts to, the interval, I should say, get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so maybe it looks like this, right? The position, uh, is going to the right, the displacement is to the right, the, the delta x between each segment is small, gets big, and then gets small again. All right, and let's try this for some real numbers, and let's see if we can plot it out. So we will start here at x equals zero, and we will increase to the right, like we typically do, and let's just pick some arbitrary values, okay? So the first one here, we're gonna move this over a little bit just to align with that. The first one here is at x equals zero. The next one is at x equals 10 meters. We'll use meters just to, to be fair. And now we've jumped up to 30 meters, and now this is even a little bit further than that. 60, okay, and now we go a little bit further, maybe 100, and now we're moving at roughly the same clip. So the difference here, 60 to 100, is 40, so this would be 140, this would be 180, this would be 220, and now we're starting to slow down, and so in each time interval, our delta x isn't quite as far anymore. So maybe this is more like 30 again. So 220 plus 30 is 250. And now this is maybe like 20. So this would be 270. And maybe this is more like 10. So that's 280. And now we really start to sort of slow down rather quickly. This is maybe 285, 288, 289, and let's just pick an ending point. We'll say it's 290. All right, a lot of data points here for our motion. How are we going to plot x as a function of time? Well, it's not too bad, right? Because we have all the data, and what we said was each interval is one second. So let's just count the number of dots. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And so we need 15 little markers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, we start at zero. Then we go to position 10. Then we go to position 30. Then we go to position 60. Then we go to position 100. And now we go to position 140 and so forth. And you can see right off the bat, we're going way too steep. We're gonna run out of room on our graph. So let's try it again. We'll go a little bit more shallow, okay? And let's say that this is the ending point, 
290, all right, which means that this is roughly 200, this is 100, something like that. All right, so 10 would be about there, 30 is the next point, 60 is the next point, 100 is at that point right there. All right, and then we go 140, 180, 220, 250, 270, 280, 288, 289, 290. All right, this is what our motion will look like. It's a series of points, of course, since we had data that was uh, individual numbers, but to aid the eye, we can draw a line. Okay, accelerating, constant speed, decelerating, something like that. Okay, these are called motion diagrams, and they help you think about visualizing these cases and putting it on a graph. All right, hopefully that is clear. Uh, if not. Come see me during office hours. Cheers.